Hello, artists and creative entrepreneurs. I'm Lauren Marie Nitka, and you're tuning into my new podcast for artists as entrepreneurs. Here, we will discuss bite sized information that will help you set up for success. Whether you're an artist, maker, or creative entrepreneur, I believe that you will find something here that you can apply to your life. If you haven't already, please click the subscribe button, hit that like button, and turn on notifications. If you've been following along with my last two videos, then we've already established that you need a dedicated studio space and a designated email. But most importantly, you need a mindset shift from a starving artist to that of an entrepreneur. I've created a checklist for starting your art business, and today we will knock out four things relating to your business finances. If you haven't yet, please click the link in the description to enter into my mailing list. Your first email after you subscribe will include your own copy of the checklist in two different color schemes for you to keep or even print. Before I begin diving into this video's topic, I want to state a disclaimer that I am not a tax or financial expert. What I am sharing with you is what I've done to establish my business, Lauren Marie Nitka, with the help of other artists and accountants. Please consult someone who is versed in this area or reach out to your state's resources for business establishment. The overall takeaway I want you to leave with is to create a business with financial integrity. You want to do things by the book as legally required by your state to the best of your ability. When I was first displaying work in the gallery in the third ward of Milwaukee, I was fresh out of college and was about to get my first big sale. I discussed it in the previous episode of this podcast, the painting of the Milwaukee Public Library that a husband wanted to surprise his wife with for Christmas. One of the gallery owners and a mentor to me at the time congratulated me when she heard the big news and then asked me an important question. You do have your sales tax identification number, correct? Um, no, I didn't even know what that was. She helped me in the most tremendous way. She walked me through how to register my business with the state of Wisconsin, obtain all the tax documents I needed, and how to navigate the revenue portal to remit my sales tax at the end of the year. In short, she helped me take my art from a hobby to an actual business. And here's the thing. It's wonderful if you can create something. It's nice to have business cards. You can even have a website or a business social media account on Instagram. But if you are not registered with your state as a legal entity, you do not have a business. And no matter how many times you call it a business, it is still not a business. And I get it. When you're first starting out, it's intimidating and a bit frustrating. Others have asked why they even have to submit sales tax when it's not that much revenue. Financial integrity starts with even the smallest of sales. I'm going to screen share with you where I would go to get resources for starting a business in the state of Wisconsin. Look at all these resources and there's someone to contact if you need help. My first few years of submitting my sales tax, I actually called to speak to a live person to walk me through the process. You will need to submit your annual revenue that is applicable to sales tax at the end of each year or by a specific date. As your business grows, or depending on the state you live in, you may need to send in sales tax more often. This is separate from your household income tax filings. Again, check with a local expert, contact your state, or work with an accountant to help you. Once you've established your business with your state government, you must open a business checking account. I prefer credit unions to banks, but find a financial institution that is right for you and supports small businesses. Opening up a specific business account should give you access to a debit card for that account, or you can open up a business credit card at the financial institution's advice. You want to keep all of your finances for your business account separate from your personal. This will help you and your accountant keep better track of expenses and revenue. Which brings me to our third checklist item today. Keep documentation of your business expenses and your revenue or your incoming sales. I do this on Google Spreadsheets with one for expenses and one for revenue. You need to track money in and money out. You can always transfer funds to pay yourself from your business as you desire based on your profit because you are the business owner, but ask your accountant how you should track that. Also on your expenses spreadsheet, ask your accountant how you should categorize those transactions, such as materials, equipment, rent, website fees, and more. And our last checklist item for today is to secure a P.O. box. 
a lot of artists, makers, and creatives of sorts start off in their homes. So their studio is at home, and that is where their business is located. But for privacy reasons, you don't want to freely give that address online. The P.O. Box address is given to clients when they need to mail something to you or for you to put as a return address. Probably the biggest reason I opened up a P.O. Box was for email campaigns. We will cover email campaigns in a future episode, but because of spam laws, you are legally required to list a legitimate address at the bottom of your emails that you send to your mailing list. Even if you live in an apartment complex or a building with security, it's best to have an address that is more private. But shop around for the best price. I looked at a variety of post offices, and the P.O. boxes in the city of Milwaukee were significantly higher than the suburbs. I also got the smallest box that works for me. You'll have to decide if location or budget is more of a priority and what size of P.O. box you will need. Okay, so we checked off a lot on our art business checklist. One, register your business. Two, open a business checking account. Three, track your expenses and revenue. And four, secure a P.O. box. Just a reminder to click that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And more importantly, let me know in the comments what step you're on with establishing your art business and what advice you've received along the way. If you'd like to receive your own copy of the Start Your Art Business Checklist, I have it linked in the description below. Thanks and see you next Friday.